here on the Hybrid Network as we're taking a little time to break down a theory I'm personally really intrigued by. The Game of Thrones fanbase is no stranger to fan theories. In fact, the massive, sprawling, multi-layered Song of Ice and Fire series might have more specific, unique theories than any other book saga before it. So you might have seen this one floating around, especially on the TV side as we near the end of Season 7 and the threat of the White Walkers moves from the back burner to clear and present danger. But I'll cut right to it. Is the Night's King really Bran Stark? This theory might sound absolutely ludicrous on the face of it, and believe me, I was right there with you when I first saw some of you guys mention it in the comments and some of the chatter around Twitter and Facebook. And I know what you're thinking, he couldn't be. We've seen the Night's King creation in that flashback sequence, and the same actor from that scene is the Night's King, literally, so it's pretty clearly not Bran. But as is the case with all fan theories, the answer is not nearly that simple. And this one in particular is especially complicated because of one thing and one thing only. Bran's ability to travel back in time with his visions and actually affect the past by warging into people and animals. No matter what Bran does or how powerful he is, time seems to exist in a closed loop in the world of Ice and Fire. And so Bran really can't change anything no matter what he does. Everything that has happened will always happen. Or, in the words of the Three-Eyed Raven, the past is already written, the ink is dry. We also know that there's a consequence for Bran staying in the past too long. On two separate occasions, the Three-Eyed Raven mentions this, saying first, it is beautiful beneath the sea, but if you stay too long, you drown, and later, literally, I think in the next episode, stay too long where you don't belong and you will never return. We've never seen the consequences of that firsthand, though, despite it being mentioned several times by the Three-Eyed Raven and also by Jojen Reed. Diving right into the meat of the theory though, this one presupposes that essentially the White Walkers will break through the wall next episode or early next season and will wreak havoc on Westeros with no sign of stopping, making it as far south as King's Landing. In the wake of all this death and destruction, and despite his attempts to remain aloof as the Three-Eyed Raven, Bran feels like he's got to do something to try and stop this threat, and so he goes back in time. First, he goes back through his visions to before the Great War, to the reign of Ares II, to try and get him to prepare the realm better for the coming of the Army of the Dead by whispering to him, as he did with Ned, but more slowly but surely. These whispers do cause Ares to begin stockpiling wildfire, but they also are what ultimately drive the Mad King mad, and cause events to proceed basically as planned, and so Bran's journey back basically just results in the same future happening. Once again, going back to the ink is dry. Next, Bran travels all the way back to the original War for the Dawn to try and figure out how the Army of the Dead was turned back the first time, or even just stop the Night's King there once and for all. But unfortunately, he fails again, although he does succeed in making true another prophecy. That prophecy is that Bran and Bran the Builder, the legendary constructor of the Wall in Winterfell, are one and the same, something that's at least hinted at a little bit in the text as passages point to the Builder being a great builder even as a child, somehow knowing how things are supposed to be built. Oh, and there's also this image from a Game of Thrones special feature back from, I think, 2012 in Season 1, which seems to show the Builder overseeing the construction of the Wall on a litter and kind of hunched over being carried by people, which could be a hint that he too is a cripple. Finally, though, having not stopped the Night's King, Bran travels back in time further than he ever has before, to the creation of the Night's King himself, which we'd seen previously in that flashback scene with the Children of the Forest, performing that ritual on the same actor that actually plays the King himself, which I mentioned earlier. In going back to that ritual, or maybe even just before it, many think Bran will war again to the Night's King in a final ploy to stop him, or convince the Children of the Forest to never carry out the ritual in the first place, but he can't, and it proceeds as planned. But in a twist, this final trip back finally fulfills the promise of the Three-Eyed Raven. Bran's gone back too far, and he can no longer return to the present, so he's stuck in the Night's King's body. Enraged at the children for failing to listen to him, he breaks their control, and the War for the Dawn begins, doomed to fail, and Bran's doomed to be stuck beyond the wall for thousands of years. But the biggest piece of the puzzle might have been hiding in the books all along, as in the very first book, Old Nan tells Bran the story of the Night's King, and says she heard a version where the Night's King was a Stark, brother of the king in the north, and named Bran. There's a little more evidence for this theory throughout the series. I mean, the outfit 
Bran wears in all of his visions is weirdly kind of similar to the Night's King's clothing, and in Season 6, Bran awakes from that vision of the first ritual in the exact same position as the Night's King when he got stabbed. This would also help explain why the Night's King seems to have a knack for knowing things he shouldn't know. Like, for example, in this past episode, that Daenerys would come with her dragons and that he should bring literally dragon-sized chains to haul it out of the water. The theory is not without issues, though, I'll admit that, and commenters on a pretty comprehensive Reddit post of the topic point out that the children should have been able to realize that the man they were performing the ritual on had been warged into, something that they themselves have the ability to do. The Mad King bit is also pretty loosely supported, as the Targaryens had a history of mental illness, but I think personally it's a pretty neat little touch. So let me know if you buy into this theory in the comment section down below, and for more information check out the link in the description that's a really in-depth Reddit post from user Turmoil26 breaking down a lot of these points in further detail than I could in this video. But that's gonna do it for me here, thanks for watching, don't forget to smash that like if you like what you're